another ASMR history video here on the channel, going back to what I think we do best. Obviously, on the channel so far, we have done the Vietnam War, we have done the Cold War, and the most recent one was the fall of the Roman Empire. Now today, as you can tell by the title, we're doing, we're doing a biggie. It is, of course, World War I, a historic event that I'm sure lots of you are familiar with, and as we do in this little series, in these in these videos, we're gonna essentially break down all the key events that happened throughout. Uh, I get some comments saying these videos are really useful for like revision or just like brushing up on dates and stuff, so that's really cool. So, you know, the fact that these videos are educational as well as hopefully relaxing is pretty pretty cool. And that's that's the aim anyway. But yeah, obviously with hindsight and as we learn with World War One, a few years later there comes World War Two. I will do a video on World War Two, but what I want to ask first is can we get this to 100 likes? So as soon as this video hits 100 likes, I will record, edit and upload the World War Two history video. So get 100 likes please. Anyways, without further ado, let's break down the events of World War One. So we start off in the year 1914. 1914. On the 28th of June 1914, we have the assassination of Franz Ferdinand, heir to the Austria-Hungary throne. Archduke Ferdinand and his wife had been inspecting Austro-Hungarian troops in occupied Sarajevo. I probably Sarajevo. A Serbian nationalist student, Gavrilo Princip, shot the couple when their open-topped car stopped on its way out of town. And on the 5th of July, as a result, Kaiser William II promised German support for Austria against Serbia. Later in July, blaming the Serbian government for the assassinations, Emperor Franz Joseph of Hungary, Austria-Hungary, declares war on Serbia and its ally, Russia. Through its alliance with France, Russia calls on the French to mobilise her armed forces. And on the 1st of August, we have the official outbreak of World War I as Germany declares war on Russia. A few days later, on the 3rd of August, Germany declares war on France. Its troops march into Belgium, implementing a pre-planned strategy, the Schlieffen strategy, intended to quickly defeat the French. British Foreign Secretary Sir Edward Grey demands that Germany withdraw from neutral Belgium. However, Germany fails to withdraw its forces from Belgium, and so Britain declares war on Germany and Austria-Hungary on the 4th of August 1914. Canada also joins the war, and President Woodrow Wilson declares American neutrality. Bloody typical. On the 7th of August, the British Expeditionary Force, BEF, starts to land in France to assist the French and Belgians in stopping the German offensive. Although much smaller than the French army, the BEF are all seasoned professional volunteers rather than raw conscripts. And on the 14th of August 1914, the Battle of the Frontiers begins. French and German forces collide along the eastern borders of France and southern Belgium. Now moving on to the 19th of October to the 22nd of November 1914, we have the First Battle of Ypres, or Ypres, the last major battle of the first year of World War I. It ends the race to the sea. The Germans are prevented from reaching Calais and Dunkirk, thus cutting off the British Army supply lines. Part of the price paid for the victory is the complete destruction of the old contemptibles. The highly experienced and professional British regular army will be replaced by fresh reserves of conscripts. On the 29th of October, Turkey enters the war on Germany's side. On the 8th of December 1914, we have the Islands. Von Spee's German cruiser squadron is defeated by the Royal Navy. More than 2,000 German sailors are either killed or drowned in the encounter, including Admiral Spee and his two sons. On 
the 16th of December 1914, the German fle fleet shells Scarborough, Hartlepool and Whitby on England's east coast. More than 700 people are either killed or injured. injured. The resulting public outrage is directed towards the German Navy for the killing of civilians and against the Royal Navy for its failure to prevent the raid in the first place. So yeah, overall, to summarise the first year of the war, the German advance into France is met by fierce Belgian resistance. The Allies eventually hold the Germans at the River Marne. After advancing from the northern coast of France to the Belgian town of Mons, British troops are finally forced to retreat. The British suffer huge losses at the First Battle of Ypres. All hope of a quick ending to the war disappears as trench warfare starts to dominate the Western Front. Moving into 1915. On the 19th of January 1915, the first German Zeppelin raid on the east coast of England, Great Yarmouth and Kings Lynn are both bombed. Diverted by strong wind, winds from their original industrial targets on the Humber estuary, the two airships involved, the L3 and L4, drop 24 high explosive bombs, killing four people and causing untold damage estimated at almost £8,000. Obviously back in the day that was a lot of money. On the 4th of February, the Germans declare a submarine blockade of Britain. Any ship approaching the British coast is to be considered a legitimate target. In response to a request from Russia in 19 February to help fend off a Turkish attack, British naval forces bombard Turkish forts in the Dardanelles. And two days later, on the 21st of February 1915, Russia suffers heavy troop losses following the Second Battle of Missourian Lakes. On the 11th of March 1915, in an attempt to starve the enemy into submission, Britain announces a blockade of German ports. Neutral ships heading for Germany are to be escorted to Allied ports and detained. The British steamship RMS Falaber becomes the first passenger ship sunk by a German U-boat. U-28. 104 people are lost to the sea, including one American passenger. I guess that's probably highlighted for the fact that it probably led to the involvement of America, right? Probably. On the 22nd of April 1915, the second Zeppelin raid on London kills 28 people and injures. 
pages 60 more. Zeppelins would continue to raid London without the risk of being shot down, as they flew too high to be worried by most aircraft of that time. On the 21st of August 1915, a story in the Washington Post reports that the US General Staff are planning to send a force of 1 million soldiers overseas. On the 30th of August, in response to American demands, Germany stops sinking ships without warning. And in the 31st of August, 1915, having removed Russian forces from much of Poland, Germany ends its offensive against Russia. On the 25th of September, the Battle of Luz starts. This marks the first time that the British used boiling gas in the war. It also sees the first large-scale deployment of Kitchener's army. Just prior to the attack, British troops release 140 tons of chlorine gas into the German lines. Thanks to the shifting winds, however, some of the gas is blown back, gassing British soldiers in their own trenches. That is possibly one of the most British things I've ever heard. On the 20th of September, the fighting at the Battle of Luce subsides, with Allied forces retreating back to where they began. The Allied attack cost nearly 50,000 casualties, including three divisional commanders. 20,000 officers and men who fall in the battle have no known grave. That's really sad. A new year, 1916. On the 1st of January, 1916, Winston Churchill is appointed Lieutenant Colonel commanding the 6th Battalion of the Royal Scots Fusiliers. He experiences active service for a few months on the Western Front in Belgium. On the 27th of January 1916, conscription is introduced in Britain. 21st of February 1916, using flamethrowers and stormtroops for the first time, the Germans launch a massive attack against the French at Verdun in what will become the longest and one of the bloodiest battles of the war. 19th of April 1916, US President Wilson publicly calls for the Germans to stop their submarine policy of sinking all ships in enemy waters without warning. And on the 27th of April 1916, Field Marshal Lord Kitchener, the British Secretary of State for War, asks for milita US military participation in Europe. 29th of April 1916, described by one historian as the most abject capitulation in Britain's military history. British Empire forces surrender to Turkish forces at Kut in Mesopotamia, modern-day Iraq. Of the 13,000 soldiers captured, less than half would survive the Turkish jails. On the 15th of May 1916, in an attempt to knock Italy out of the war in a single blow, Austro-Hungarian forces begin the Trentino offensive towards Italy's northern plain. On the 31st of May to the 1st of June, the Battle of Jutland. During the only large-scale naval battle of the war, German ships attempt to break free from a British naval blockade of the North Sea. Although the battle itself is inconclusive, it does not keep the German service fleet confined to port for the remainder of the war. Instead, the German Navy turns its efforts to submarine warfare. On the 4th of June 1916, in an attempt to relieve pressure on the British and the French armies along the Western Front, Russia launches its Brusilov Offensive against Austro-Hungary in Carpathia, which is modern-day Ukraine. On the 1st of July 1916, we have the start of the Battle of the Somme. Some 60,000 British men are killed or seriously wounded on the first day alone. Despite such huge losses, Field Marshal Douglas Haig orders that the battle must continue. On the 30th of July 1916, the Black Tom Island munitions plant in America's Jersey City is destroyed by an explosion. German saboteurs appear to have bombed the plant to prevent materials being sold to the Allies. Shrapnel from the explosion actually damages the Statue of Liberty. In August 1916, Romania enters the war on the side of the Allies. 15th of September 1916, tanks are introduced for the first time on the Somme battlefield by the British. They are used in such limited numbers that their impact is negligible. On the 20th of September, Russia's Brusilov Offensive in Carpathia comes to an end. The 
Austro-Hungarian army is all but wiped out, with 1.5 million men lost. Russian casualties are numbered at around half a million. On the 18th of November 1916, the Battle of the Somme ends. With approximately 1.5 million casualties, it will be remembered as one of the bloodiest military operations in history. On the 28th of November, the first German airplane air raid on London. The plan was to occupy Royal Flying Corps aircraft in defence of England rather than attacking the German Air Force. On the 7th of December 1916, David Lloyd George replaces Asquith as British Prime Minister of the wartime coalition. His war cabinet, unlike that of his predecessor, would meet every day. And finally, in 1916, on the 18th of December, after almost 10 months, the German attack on Verdun ends, with the French holding their positions. The cost of the longest battle of the war is more than a quarter million deaths and at least one million wounded. On the 1st of February, 1917, Germany resumes unrestricted U-boat warfare. All Allied and neutral ships are to be sunk on site. Over the next month, close to a million tons of shipping would be lost. Lloyd George orders ne Royal Navy convoys to protect merchant ships destined for Britain. On the 3rd of February 1917, the United States of America severs diplomatic ties with Germany. On the 24th of February 1917, the Cunard passenger liner SS Laconia, sailing from New York to Liverpool, is sunk. Irish coast by a German U-boat. The Zimmerman telegram is passed to the United States government by the British. It contains details of a German proposal of an alliance with Mexico against America. On the 2nd of April 1917, US President Woodrow Wilson addresses Congress and asks the House of Representatives to declare war on Germany. And on the 6th of April, they do just that. The USA declares war on Germany. On the 13th of April 1917, Canadian troops capture Vimy Ridge. The Canadians seize ground of great military importance and inflict heavy casualties on the German army. On the 7th of June 1917, the British detonate 19 large mines containing some 400 and 55 tons of explosive under the Messines Ridge in Belgium. The resulting explosions can be heard as far away as London and Dublin. More than 10,000 German soldiers are killed and much of the fortifications along the ridge are destroyed as well as much of Messines itself. On the 26th of June, the 1st US troops, men of the 1st Division, begin to arrive in France. The next day, on the 27th of June, Greece enters the war on the side of the Allies. On the 31st of July, 1917, the main offensive of the Third Battle of Ypres begins. The Allies suffer about 32,000 casualties, killed, wounded or missing in this action. The 6th of November, 1917. British and Canadian forces finally reach Passchendaele, and so the Third Battle of Ypres ends. In the three and a half months of the offensive, British and Empire forces had advanced barely five miles and had suffered horrendous casualties. On the 7th of November 1917, on the Alpine front between Italy and Austria-Hungary, the 12th and final battle of Isonzo ends in terminal failure for the Italian army. Austria-German forces break through at Caporetto. Italian losses total more than 300,000. At least 60,000 soldiers from both sides are killed by avalanches. The Bolsheviks overthrow the Russian government and install a communist one under Lenin. 20th of November 1917. with a surprise mass tank attack by the British. This demonstrates for the first time that the impenetrable German Hindenburg
work line could in fact be breached. On the 7th of December 1917, the United States declares war on Austro-Hungary. On the 9th of December, the British capture Jerusalem from the Turks. Edmund Allenby enters the city on foot in respect for the holy city and quickly posts guards to protect all sites held sacred by the Christian, Muslim and Jewish religions. And finally, down here for 1917, on the 22nd of December, Bolshevik Russia opens peace negotiations with Germany at Brest-Litovsk, which is now Brest in Belarus. And we now move into the final year of the war, the final important events of the World War I conflict. On the 3rd of March 1918, a peace treaty is signed between Soviet Russia and the Central Powers, which is Germany, Austria, Hungary and Turkey. At Brest, the treaty marks Russia's final withdrawal from World War I. The humiliating terms of the treaty effectively surrenders one third of Russia's population, half of her industry and 90% of her coal mines. Russia also cedes lands including Poland, Ukraine and Finland, and cash payments are made to release Russian prisoners of war. On the 21st of March 1918, with 50 divisions now freed by the surrender of Russia, Germany realises that its only chance of victory is to defeat the Allies quickly before the huge human and industrial resources of America are deployed. Germany launches the Ludendorff, or First Spring Offensive, against the British on the Somme. On the 1st of April 1918, the Royal Flying Corps and the Royal Naval Air Service are merged to form the Royal Air Force. On the 9th of April 1918, Germany launches a second spring offensive, the Battle of the Lys, in the German sector of the Armentieres. The front line Portuguese defenders are quickly overrun by overwhelming numbers of British troops. The capture of the Channel supply ports at Calais, Dunkirk and Boulogne could choke the British into defeat. On the 23rd of April 1918, the Sea Bruges raid an attempt by the British Royal Navy to block the Belgian port of Bruges, see Bruges. The, the port is an important base for German U-boats. The raid is only a partial military success, but more significantly, a important propaganda victory for the Allies. On the 25th of May 1918, German U-boats appear in the US waters for the first time. On the 27th of May, 1918, the Third German Spring Offensive, the Third Battle of the Aisne, begins in the French sector along Chemin des Dames. The main objective of the Germans is to split French and British forces in an attempt to gain a quick victory before American troops are deployed in greater numbers on the battlefields of Europe. On the 28th of May, US forces, some of 4,000 troops, are victorious in their first major action of the Great German Spring Push. The Second Battle of Marne begins. The heavy toll on the German army from the previous spring offences is beginning to show with depleted and exhausted troops. On the 18th of July 1918, 18, the Allies counter-attack against German forces, seizing the initiative on the Western Front. The 8th of August 1918 brings the start of the Battle of Omeons the opening phase of the Allied Hundred Days Offensive that will ultimately lead to the end of World War I. Allied armoured foot divisions smash through the once impregnable German trenches. Erich Ludendorff calls it the Black Day of the German Army. On the 15th of September 1918 is the start of an Allied offensive against Bulgarian forces. The Vardar Offensive would last little over a week, with Bulgaria eventually signing an armistice and exiting the war. Bulgaria's King Ferdinand would abdicate shortly afterwards. On the 19th of September 1918, the British begin an offensive 
forces in Palestine, the Battle of Megiddo. The battle would prove to be the final victory of British General Edmund Allenby's conquest of Palestine. Unlike most other offensive offences of World War I, Allenby's campaigns had succeeded with relatively little cost. 26th of September 1918, the Meuse-Argonne Offensive begins. This will be the last Franco-American campaign of the war. It is during this battle that Corporal Alvin York makes his famous capture of 132 German prisoners. On the 4th of October 1918, Germany asks the Allies for an armistice, and by mid-October the Allies had taken control of almost all of German-occupied France and part of Belgium. On the 21st of October, Germany ceases its policy of unrestricted submarine warfare. On the 3rd of November 1918, following the fall of Trieste, Austro-Hungary concludes an armistice with the Allies. And on the 7th of November, Germany begins negotiations for an armistice with the Allies in Ferdinand Fox's railway carriage headquarters at Compiègne. Um, some of these names are a bit difficult to pronounce. And at the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, in the French town of Redondes, Germany, signs an armistice with the Allies, the official date of the end of World War One. Now, with, with the end of World War One, there was like a bit of a squabble over how much reparations Germany's a pay, how severely they should be punished, etc, etc. And we do have the uh, the Treaty of Versailles, sort of, and the, the bit of legislation that sets out how much reparations Germany had to pay. Um, I remember doing this, I think it was for, I think it was for either AS or A-level history. Um, to be honest, this could be a video on its own. It, let me know if you're studying history and whether that might be something of interest or something that's useful to you going over the, the key events, dates and details of the Treaty of Versailles. But yeah, that, uh, the 11th of November marks the end of World War One, and thus the end of this video. I really hope you did enjoy everyone. Uh, most importantly, I hope you found it relaxing as well as, you know, educational. Two birds with one stone. But yeah, if you did enjoy, 